so how you would go about trouble shooting your calidim process see majorly one thing you will have to check is that you get the syntax correct okay but many times even after getting the syntax correct the logic correct you would find certain issues happening in your calculation script okay so whenever you are testing the calculation you need to ensure that you turn off the intelligent calculation okay this is something we have already discussed in our earlier classes as well that to turn off the intelligent calc the command to turn off the intelligent calc is set update calc off also group back calculation formula in parenthesis okay, now what do we mean by back calculation it's same like your two pass calculation so basically the calculation which require a second pass to give the correct result so in this example list price and discount percent they are the back calculations or two pass calculation so you group them together at the end in parenthesis if you ensure that these are correct the next thing that you can do is you can view the log to show how to view the log i am going to go back to our application that is app one to view the log i just right click on the database sorry not on the database the log is on the application so i say view log either i can display the entire log or i can just specify the date so let's say i say 18 say okay then i can view the log for 18 here it will tell you what all activities happened on the application so you can even catch your issues from the log itself yes raja that's correct log records everything that you would do in sbase so even the script when you run the script it will record the execution of the script and the actions that are happening within the script okay so when you actually have a single pass calculation you may end up getting incorrect results like list price and discount percent you get incorrect results for the quarters so you get incorrect results for the quarters so what you have to do is you have to make it into a multiple pass by saying that this is a back calculation it becomes multiple pass the moment you put it in the parenthesis and place it at the end of the script so then you will get correct results even at the quarters okay so this is just a uh, little bit of things that you can do to trouble shoot your calculation scripts okay see major of the time it will be either the syntax okay or the logic that may be causing the problem okay but apart from that if you get the syntax correct 
apart from that you need to ensure things like turning off the intelligent calculation having the back calculation properly set and looking at the log now moving ahead let us take a look at some of the advanced calculation steps so we will look at controlling the calculation script okay yeah kamar we just started we actually just uh, looked at how we would go about troubleshooting the uh, calculation scripts okay so the process that you need to follow to troubleshoot your calculation script okay just i'll give you a quick recap uh, there are three things that you can do one is you ensure that you have turned off your intelligent calculation so you can set update calc off command in your calculation script second is you ensure that two pass calculations or back calculations are grouped together in parentheses and lastly you can look at the log so these are the three things that you can do apart from your syntax to troubleshoot your calculation scripts now moving ahead we will look at how to control your calculation scripts so we will describe the top down calculation we will see how to focus calculations with the fix okay this is something we actually had a look yesterday okay another way to control your calculation is using the if statement then we will look at comparing the fix and the if statements so which which one is better or which one you can use let's say i have a very simple formula net sales is equal to gross sales minus the discounts okay. this formula is a dense member formula because it's a accounts formula whatever members i use are actually from the accounts dimension net sales gross sales and discounts okay so before actually executing this formula my pag file has got blocks which does not have the calculation for this particular net sales member when i execute this kind of a formula what is going to happen is this net sales is going to get calculated for each and every member block present in the pag file so if you have let's say you know uh, you know let's say if you have 1500 blocks so that 1500 times that calculation of 1500 data values will be calculated this will happen when you do not have any control based calculation okay so in your page file you will end up with having the net sales for all the blocks the same case if i go and do it in a control way i can fix certain members so i say fix budget and i children of retail so what is it going to do it is going to pick up all the blocks which have the budget and the i children of retail members so let's say retail has got only one member so it will pick up retail and the child of retail 
So when I run this, it is only going to pick up the relevant blocks, calculate the net sales for those relevant blocks, and in my PAD files, only the blocks which were selected are calculated. So this is how we will focus the calculation we are using the fig statement. Same way, I can also focus using the if statement. So instead of saying fix budget, fix at the rate, I children of retail, I just do a check if at the rate is member is budget and if at the rate is I child is retail, then you calculate. But with if, what is going to happen is, it is going to bring all the blocks into the memory and it will scan through each of the block and wherever this if condition is satisfied, see if is basically going to check for the condition and at the rate is member and at the rate is I child are boolean functions. They will return me a true or a false value. So when both these functions return me a true value, that means this net sales has to be calculated. So it will scan through all the blocks and calculate the values for the relevant blocks. Okay. Now one may think what is better, the if condition or the fix condition. With an if condition I can do lot of boolean checking, so I can check whether my conditions are meeting or not, I can do if and else. For example, let us say I want to give different discount for different customers. So I can check firstly if it is a level 0 product because discount is for the product and not for any category. If it is not, I say no calculation, I do not give any calculation. If it is a level 0 product, I check whether it is OEM customer. If it is OEM customer, I calculate the discount as gross sales into OEM discount percent. If it is not, then we calculate, then we check whether it is a retail customer. If it is a retail customer, then I calculate discounts as gross sales into retail discount. Else I just calculate the discount as gross sales into general discount percent. So this is something we can do with the Boolean functions. The Boolean functions in SBase will generally start with is. So you will have at the rate is member, at the rate is child, at the rate is parent. Let's take a look at the syntax requirements for the if statement. <coughs> See the fix, when we wrote the fix command, it was very simple, but when you write the if statement, 
the syntax is little bit tricky we have to first specify a block that is a account inside which you will write your if statement <coughs> sorry guys so here i have the unit block inside this i will write if at the rate is member is budget and then i calculate units list price and discount percent so remember that if statement will always come inside a block of an account or maybe time period basically a dense block will hold the if condition let us take a look at the comparison between the fix and the if statements okay see i have two sets of calculation one is using the if statement another is towards using the fix statement both are going to produce the same result but we need to understand which one will work faster let us go through the first calculation script here we are checking if at the rate member is september then unit is equal to at the rate prior units 1 prior is basically referring to the pre previous time period so if it is september then pick up the value of one month prior to september that is august so september holds the same value as august else if at the rate is member is october then units is equal to at the rate prior units two months prior so that means if it is october then pick up the value of two months prior to october and multiply it into 1.1 to give me the value of 110 so i check if it is september do this calculation else if it is october do this calculation same way the same calculation i can achieve it through the fixed statement so i say fixed september units is equal to at the rate prior units of one month prior so it will fix this september then i say fix october and again calculate the october units the formula to calculate the units is same only in the first block i am trying with the if condition and in the second i am trying with the fix statement are you referring to this kamar are you referring to this one and two yes this one means prior is a function which will pick up the prior month okay so when i say prior month units then i need to specify 
विच प्रायर मंथ सो आई जस्ट से वन मंथ प्रायर ओवर इयर एंड टू मंथ प्रायर ओवर इयर Now, any guesses, guys? Which will be faster in this particular case, fix or if? Are you able to make any conclusion? Which one should be faster? if condition or fix condition in this no no guesses okay both of you say fix why you say fix just a wild guess or any reason behind it yes raza you have a good point okay but in this particular case it may not be the case that fix is faster let us check why okay when i do a if statement okay if it is going to process all the data blocks to the memory same way fix is also on a dense member so it is going to process the all the data blocks through the memory okay only then it can fix on a particular month but when if is fix going through all the data blocks in the memory it is going in a single calculation member block so it will check if it is at the rate member is september else if it is october so it is just do the calculation in one go but here i have in the second part i have two separate fixes i say fix i say fix so this time it will go through the entire block then again here it will go through the entire block so this requires two passes through the blocks this requires only one pass to the block no no neither if nor fix will go to straight to the member both will have to scan through all the blocks okay the reason being when you say fix september you could have multiple blocks with september month each year you will have september so you could have many box blocks with september so neither if nor fix will directly pick up the member they will have to scan through all the blocks okay but when it is scanning this if is going to scan for both september and october at the same time so you have all the blocks what if is going to do is it will check whether it is september then calculate for september if it is october then calculate for october so this it will do for all the blocks at the single pass when it fix when i say fix september it will it is not checking any condition it is just going to go through the block and see if september is existing it will pick that september and calculate the unit
remember this difference is happening because september and october are all dense members they will be present in all the blocks so what we have done is we have looked at the top down calculation how you can focus on the calculation using the fixed statement calculate conditionally with if statement and comparing fix and the if statement okay again guys this difference you know sometimes may be marginal you may not even realize yeah good question raza i would typically use fix more okay if i have to frequently fix the sparse dimension okay so i generally follow the rule that fix on sparse and if on dense okay but you could use other way around also you can use both the cases if both the cases fix okay generally i follow for better performance i will write a if condition if it is a dense member i will write the fix condition if it is a sparse member so again in sb there is nothing right or wrong maybe sometimes you may not even realize or notice the difference between an if and a fix statement calculation yeah this is what i follow okay again this is not any rule or any uh, practice or any uh, you know logical requirement you can do the vice versa also you can make both fix you can follow both if okay but fix on sparse and if on dense is something which i follow because my personal experience has given me a better performance with using this okay so we saw two two way to control your calculations using the fix and fix and the if statement now let us take a look at few more calculation script things that you can do okay so we will look at referencing members explicitly and dynamically in a calculation script okay see a calculation script in sbase is not having many many things okay there are very few things that you need to know okay you need to know the set commands you need to know how to write a formula you need to know the if if and the fix statements you need to know how to use the functions and you need to know how to use the variables and how to reference members explicitly and dynamically if you know all this you sh you should be able to write any calculation logic within the script so let us take a look at how to reference member explicitly and dynamically and how to create calculation variables okay we have taken a look at the global variable creation yesterday so we will just go through how to create temporary variables and the global variables
so let us take a look at how to reference the units explicit or uh, how to reference the members explicitly okay let us say i have this requirement to calculate unit mix by customer So what is my requirement? My requirement is very simple. Unit mix is calculated by block one units divided by block three units, okay. which means I want to divide this hundred by this one thousand. Block two units that is six hundred. <coughs> divided by again 1000 and lastly block 3 units again divided by block 3 units okay so i have these three blocks for all these three blocks we need to calculate the units mixed by customer okay now if i see my formula everywhere the denominator is having block 3 units so block 3 units is something which is remaining constant the thing that is changing is block 1 units block 2 units and block 3 units <coughs> so looking at the formula i know that i need to explicitly always use the block 3 units in the denominator Raja, I'm not sure what you are trying to say over here. Just like using dollar to log the cells in spreadsheet. Uh, see, this is more for terms of calculation. Okay. Okay. Maybe just just hold on. Let us look at these calculations. Then probably we will come back to the question of what you are trying to say. Okay. So here I know that. every time in the denominator i want to use the block 3 units ah okay 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 now now i got it raza yes this is correct it is like using the dollar sign for uh, locking the cells in spreadsheet when you do the calculation yeah it is very similar to that so i want to explicitly always use block 3 units so what i do is i know that each time in the numerator my as my customer will change the block 1 units will change but for denominator i always have to use the channel total units to explicitly refer the channel total units always we have an operator called cross dim operator this operator minus greater than sign is called as a which looks like an arrow is called a cross dim operator it says units at channel total so the formula is pick up the units no matter for which block but always divided by units at channel total so when the calculation happens it comes to the first block it will pick up the units from the first block 
which is 100, then divided by units at channel total. So it looks at channel total units which is 1000. So you get 100 divided by 1000 that is 10 percent. Then it comes to block 2, picks up the units 600, again picks up the units at channel total, so you get 600 divided by 1000, that is 60 percent. And same way it comes to the channel total. Units are 1000, again divided by units at channel total, that is also 1000, so it is 100 percent. So using this cross div operator, I was always able to use the channel total units. which means I am able to explicitly point out to a value and use that value. So this cross dim operator is a very important operator when you do write calculation scripts in SBase. Now let us take a look at the referencing members dynamically. Here I have a requirement to use different customer categories and calculate the unit mix by channel total for those customer categories. Like I have an OEM category and a retail category. And I want to calculate the same units mixed by channel for the OEM customers and for the retail customers. So I have four blocks, two for OEM and two for retail. The calculation over here, the formula is like this. I have block one units to be divided by block two units and block two units divided by block two units again. Okay, so this is first part. And the second part I have block 3 units to be divided by block 4 units and block 4 units again to be divided by block 4 units. Okay. See in the first part it was uh, easy for me because I knew that my denominator is always fixed so I could explicitly refer that denominator. But here my denominator is also changing, so I want to reference it dynamically. So this is how you would reference it dynamically we will use the at the rate i children function. <coughs> you can very well use the if condition also over here, but as I told you OEM retail distributor are all customer members which are sparse. So I have used the fix condition over here. So you fix the children of OEM, then calculate unit mix by channel for OEM as units divided by units for OEM.
same way you fix the retail and calculate the units mixed by channel for retail as units divided by units at retail. Okay. So you can do that for all the categories like for distributor again you can use the units at distributor. So what we are doing is we are basically using a function to get a set of or a list of members for which I can dynamically specify the formula. Okay. Tomorrow if any, let's say you have another retail customer added, okay. automatically the calculation will be applicable for that retail customer because it is a children of retail, it will be a child of retail. So no matter where, how and when your customers are going to be added or removed, this calculation will not undergo change, unless there is a change in the logic itself, okay. but addition, removal or deletion of any customer is not going to change this calculation because it is dynamic in nature. What is making it dynamic in nature? The at the rate children function is making it dynamic in nature. Okay. <coughs> Another way of achieving the same calculation, okay. now this is little difficult to understand but the same calculation what we had into the previous screen, I can use the same calculation by using a function called ancest well. which means what it is going to do is, it is going to take the third generation, so I say customer third generation for the units, okay, so entire of these three statements, I can replaced by this particular line. So what it is going to do is, it is going to take the units block wise, okay. so let's say it takes up the unit for IBM, O IBM it is picking up the units, divided by ancestor of customer third generation. Okay. Which is the third generation in related to OIBM, this is the first generation, this is the second, this is the third. So when it is referring to the OIBM units, it will automatically pick up the units for OEM. Likewise when it is looking at the units for Dell, it will look at again the third generation for customer, so this time it will be customer, channel total second generation and retail becomes the third generation. So it will pick up the units of retail. So we can use a function like this, yeah OEM, retail, distribute are all the three are at the third generation.
yeah because it will look at the current member so when you are looking at the units of oibm that is the current member for or the current block so for that current member it will see which is the third generation so let's say if you were like in odel yes oibm will pick up from odel or o uh, or sorry odel will pick up from oem or oibm will pick up from oem okay see when you are when you are actually you looking at the units let's say for, let's say for example you are looking at the o acer units okay so automatically it will pick up the third generation of o acer which is oem so it actually looks at the current member and takes the third generation for that current member likewise when you are at hp hp is the current member so it will see which is the third generation which is reaching me towards hp see yes r h p will be retail okay see in the case study that i have given to you guys there is one exercise which will have such kind of calculations when you actually do it you will realize how it is happening now let us take a look at creating a substitution variable or calculation variable <coughs> in sbase there are two types of variables that are present one is called as a temporary variable other is called as a substitution variable the scope of a temporary variable is within the script so you define a temporary variable within the script use it within the script and it will go out of the memory once your script execution is over so the scope is within the script you can use it only in the script in which you have defined it temporary variables are created using a keyword called where so in this particular example i have used where retail discount is equal to 1.005 and then the discount is calculated using discount into ret discount okay in a temporary variable you can directly use it just like a member you do not need any special ampersand sign to use it then we have the substitution variable which is something which we define at a global level for the application okay. substitution variables are prefixed by ampersand sign and they will pick up the value that has been specified at the global level okay so when should you use a temporary variable and when should you use a substitution variable okay 
temporary variable i would typically use when this value of the variable is not dependent on user input okay so it is just for my internal calculation purpose so that time i will use a temporary variable okay but if there is user dependency for the value then i will make it a substitution variable like for example the current month is something which is dependent on the user input so each month user will go in the system or admin will go in the system and change the current month substitution variables i can use across multiple scripts for the application so let's say i have four calculation script i can use the same substitution variable in the four scripts temporary variables can only remain in one script in which you define they will be present in that script the moment you end that script they will also be terminated so typically when you should look at defining a temporary variable when you want to store any intermediate calculation so basically for your internal calculation which is got nothing the user or the administrator has got nothing to do with that calculation and it helps you to reduce your script complexity okay maybe you are trying to use some value which you are getting through using a very uh, you know complex calculation or complex combination then what you do is you just pick up that and put it in a variable or let's say you want to retrieve a value which you are going to use multiple times so you just retrieve that into a variable and then you can use it multiple times and to improve the performance so these are typical conditions under we, which we should look at creating temporary variables creating substitution variables is something which we saw yesterday but i'll just quickly go through it again you need to right click on the server it is at a global level at the server level you say edit and then you say variables this is where you define if you have to add you can just say add over here and you define your application see there is an option to make it super global by saying all application maybe something like a current year or a current month can also be used for all application but typically i will restrict it to a single application so that there is no issue in the functioning of the application so we select the application then we select the database and the variable name let's say i say current current scenario and then i can give a value budget
okay see in case your value is having any spaces or underscores or hyphens then you should put that inside a quote even if to the normal value you put inside a quote it is still fine quotation or without quotation both of them work in as days like you see here they have a space so that is why explicitly they have put the value inside the quotes so we looked at how to explicitly refer member or dynamically refer member we can explicitly refer the member using the cross dim operator for dynamically i can use functions like children descendants or ancest val then we looked at creating the calculation variables so there are two types of variables we have temporary variables and substitution variables temporary variables should be create more for your intermediate calculations to reduce complexity and improve performance there is substitution variable used more if you want to accept input from the user it is a global level variable applicable for all the scripts you write in as this not only in uh, in the scripts it is also you can use this variable in a report or when we do planning we can also use it in a high speed and planning web form any questions so far kamar any questions from your side raza okay see guys let me tell you okay the way one writes a script okay may differ from person to person okay there is nothing which would tell me that this way is right or this way is wrong just you best practices to follow get the best optimum performance and the desired result and you should be good yes that is what i am saying the moment you are able to get a good performance and the desired re result you should be good what approach you have taken to write the script whether you have used if whether you have you have used fix whether you have used functions whether you have not used functions it's all okay the moment you get a proper performance and a desired result okay. nobody question can question your uh, logic or your script if things are working as as far as performance and the results are concerned yes come at a uh, good question when you do not have lot of data the performance may be good okay uh, but actually the calculation script might not be optimal uh, this is a very good question but you know firstly let me tell you that many times you know uh, you will not realize this calculation script is optimal or not until and unless you have the uh, data available so, i mean lot of data available 
so generally when you test it you should try to replicate more sets of data and try it on that still again you may not even able to catch in that okay then that is why i have been telling that you should try to follow the best practices so you follow the best practices do uh, you know lot of testing replicate the data do lot of testing okay but again then you know uh, sometimes you know even after doing all those when you have lot of data coming in coming in coming in you will start having uh, you know calculation issues or the performance issues okay that's one of the reasons you know you may hear that many times organization will actually go into a, a performance tuning and optimization project itself okay so there are various factors involved to it even the way you design your dimension also uh, has an huge impact on the performance okay and the last thing is more of uh, you know experience the more you work the better you will get you are the mistakes that you make or uh, the issues that you encounter and solve you know you will you know become careful next time you don't make the same thing so this is how it works again as i tell, tell, told you if you are getting the correct desired results and in the optimum performance time then you should be good okay follow the best practices do good testing and ensure that your performance is good and the results are correct okay. any other questions come out from your side raza what about you any questions from your side guys what we will do is we will end the session over here now uh, from a next class we will start with hyperion planning okay uh, let me tell you hyperion planning when we get into planning okay it will be more of practical uh, we will look more lot of examples on the product as far as sbs was concerned you had to understand lot of things conceptually okay because uh, it's not like a traditional relational database Uh, with multi-dimensionality, lot of concepts come into picture. So, with planning, we will look at how to exploit all the features of planning with SBS as the database. So, next class, we will start with Hyperion planning. Uh, yeah, we will look at what is planning, how does planning fit into the Hyperion space, and we will start at looking creating application in a Hyperion planning uh, environment. Yeah, Rajesh. Yeah, Rajesh. Tell me a question. No, is there a one-to-one -one relationship between different OLTP data sources and application we define in? Uh, see, may or may not be. Okay, when you talk about a SBS application, there may no may you can have it based on one-to-one -one relationship or you may not. Okay, it totally depends. that is what i am saying totally depends uh, again you know when you talk about sbs you from the data so perspective okay you should be actually looking at what you are trying to achieve yeah see for example if i am looking at doing a financial planning okay so i know that my actual set of numbers like uh, you know the trial balance 
would typically come from the S base, uh, sorry, from the SAP system if it is existing. Okay. But in my application, I am not only looking to have actual numbers, I am looking to also have budget numbers. Okay. Now, budget numbers may not exist in SAP. Okay. They may be, you know, the source for the budget data may be manual Excel files which the users are using. Okay, so that budget numbers for that budget numbers the source becomes my Excel files. So you have numbers coming from SAP that are actuals, numbers, budget numbers that are coming from Excel files. Okay, you could have certain other uh, you know inputs required, which may not present in both of the systems. So you may give a provision to user to uh, enter that directly into the system. Now, if you actually recollect your, uh, we discussed the case study yesterday. Okay, if you recollect how we came to the, uh, how the sources were determined. Generally, you would determine the source by studying their as is reports and their wish list. Okay, so when you see their as is reports and use try to understand what what are the additional things that they are requiring out of the systems then you go about identifying the data source for those as is reports and the new additional requirements and then it may not be it may be just one sap system giving you all the data or many times it may not be that one sap system giving you all the data okay from my experience i have seen that Invariably or most frequent number of times, it has to be multiple sources. Okay, at least actual and budget will be from different sources. Okay. Fine, guys. So you guys have a nice weekend, and uh, we'll catch back on after the weekend. Thank you, Raza. Bye. Thanks, Kamar. You too. Have a good night. Good night, Kamar. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.